please rise for the reading of the scripture. The scripture today is from Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Praise be God. Thank you, Dixie. Say one short prayer, please. Dear God, let the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight. In your name we pray, amen. I don't know about you, but I get sick and tired of turning on the news. All you hear is division in this country, wars throughout the world, people hurting their neighbors, famine, heartbreak, murder, just so much going on. So much in this world just seems to be falling apart around us. And it's not just in other countries or some far off place. It's in our backyards. It's in our cities. It's in our states. It's in our country. We as Americans like to divide ourselves for some reason. You know, we have the haves and the have-nots. We have the rich. We have the poor. We have the... Republicans, we have the Democrats. It doesn't matter which one you want to go with. We like to divide ourselves and separate ourselves from each other when we really need to come together. So many things in this world would be so much better if we could just come together as one people. When Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said to love your God and to love your neighbor. Well, he did say that love your God is the first. He said, but like it is to love your neighbor. Why would he have those two together if he didn't want us to do that? But first off, let's ask the question, what is love? The Bible tells us what love is. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. That's a pretty dang good definition of what love is. And that is what we are to do for God and our neighbors. We're supposed to love them. It says nowhere in there that we are supposed to condemn our neighbors. That is not our job. We're supposed to love our neighbors, love them as ourselves. But why don't we do that? Now let's take the word neighbor. What does God mean by neighbor here? Does he mean only the person that lives right next door to you? No. Our neighbors are any person that you see on the street, any person that you come in contact with, any person that you may know, you may not know, that is a sinner, that is a very righteous person, that is a crook, that is a saint. Everyone is your neighbor. We're supposed to love all of them. Jesus got in trouble because he would dine with tax collectors and sinners. They really dislike tax collectors. I mean, this has been mentioned a couple times already. Tax collectors are at the bottom of the rung. You know, I don't like tax collectors either, but I don't know if I put them that low. But Jesus would dine with them. When he could have been dining with kings, dining with the Pharisees, dining with the priest, but he went where he was needed. He dined with the sinners, the people who needed to hear God's Word. He didn't condemn them, but He taught them how God loved and that He loved them. That's what we're asked to do. 
How are we to love others? First, we've got to know what love is, which we've talked about. We need to know who these others that we need to love. I'm going to add one more. You need to love yourself. That is something that is forgotten way too much. How can you love others if you don't love yourself? Loving yourself is the first step into understanding love. We make mistakes. But too many times we make mistakes and we blame ourselves for that mistake. We beat ourselves down. We think we're not worthy. We think we're worthless. We think we have no redeeming qualities because we don't love ourselves. We need to love like God loves us. And to do that, we need to see ourselves as God sees us. God knew we were sinners. But God loved us so much that He sent His Son that through Him, we could have a wonderful relationship with God. Think about that. Many people have been asked to send sons and daughters to die in wars. And people ask them, how can you do this? Some say, well, you know, it's an honor to the country. Or it's these other people need help and they can do it. Some of them will say, I don't want to send my son and daughter to die. But I did because it was the right thing to do. Then there's God. I sent him because I love you. God loves us so much that he sent his one and only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We say that verse almost every day you hear that verse somewhere. But how many times do you take it in and remember that you are one of the people that Jesus came and died for? Remembering that is the first step to being able to love others. Once you can love yourself, then you need to start knowing how to love others. There's so many ways that you can love your neighbor. You can just be kind to them. See somebody walking down the street? Wave at them. You know, smiling at somebody and waving at them can change a person's whole attitude for the rest of the day. Walking down the street with a big old smile on your face can make somebody look at you and say, hey, my life can't be that bad. Seeing you walking down the road in a cast, which I do very well, may make somebody else think, wow, at least I'm not him. A simple greeting can be enough to let somebody know that you care. A simple text message sent at the right time can save somebody's life. A simple where are you can change a person's whole outlook. Going to a food bank and helping out can feed somebody for a day. But in their heart, they may have been that day that they needed just to know someone cared. Making a donation in the offering plate or making a donation to a charity. We don't always see where that money goes. But it could be used for relief from a hurricane. It could be used to help somebody who lost everything in a fire. And somebody, life was saved because of a few measly dollars. But they're going to remember that. You know, they always say, pay it forward. You should always remember to do good things because hopefully that person's going to do good things. There was this video I saw on Facebook a couple of days ago. It was this guy walking down the street, and he was just upset. He was not happy. He wasn't doing anything to help anybody in the world. 
This woman dropped all her groceries and he just walked on by. And then he got to the corner. He was looking down at his phone. And some old lady that was standing on the side of the road with a cane put her cane out real quick and stopped him. And a second later, a bus went through the intersection. He stopped, looked at the woman, and thanked her. He immediately turned around, went back, and helped the person pick up all the groceries. He dropped some money in an offering plate that was on the side by a person who was homeless. And then all of a sudden, this big grin broke out on his face. And then the next thing you say, he's doing good all over the city. Later on at his job, he finds out that the person he helped pick up the groceries for was his boss's wife. The lady who helped him on the side of the road was a neighbor. God works in mysterious ways. We help somebody today. Tomorrow, we might be the one that's helped. We always have to remember there is so much more going on that we don't always see. This country is entering a very hectic time. The next few months are going to see hate coming from so many different directions, coming out of politicians' mouths. I don't care which side you support, it does not matter. People, when they don't agree, like to be loud. We don't have to be that way. We can live with respect for each other and still disagree. My neighbor may be Muslim, Hindu, atheist, but I still can respect them. I have talked to so many people of other religions who vehemently just kept hounding me, saying, I don't understand why you believe in Christianity. And I'll do the exact same thing to them and hound it in. I don't believe why you don't. But at the end of the day, we can still walk away as friends because, yes, we said our peace. We took the time to try to explain to somebody why we believe in Christianity, why we think something you may be doing is not right, but we don't do it out of anger. We do it out of love. And at the end of the day, if they don't listen to us or want to take our advice, what did Jesus tell the disciples? Knock the dust off your feet and keep going. He didn't say condemn anyone. That's his job. And I am not qualified for that. I am but one person and I am a very messed up person sometimes. I feel God working in my life all the time. He gives me the words to say when I need them. He allows me to get up in front of a group of people and actually be able to talk. Because at one time, I would be up here shaking so bad and probably having to grab a trash can because I could not do it. But I know He's with me and helping me. For he who loves his neighbor fulfills all the commandments. And he who fulfills the commandments loves God. Therefore, the two commandments are very much connected and inseparable. What does this mean? It means to love your God, you have to love your neighbor. There is no question about it. Because God is love. And how can you hate and still be doing what we say we need to do for God? As we go through these elections, we're going to disagree. I bet every person in this room will find something to disagree about with somebody else. But that's okay. We live in a country that we're allowed to do that. 
I can save my peace and still love you. I can say what I think is right and not condemn the person who doesn't. It's hard to do that because that's not human nature, but it's God's nature. He has given us so few things that we have to do to be Christians. Feed a sheep. Tell others about Christ. Love your neighbor. And not just love your neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. And also love yourself. In 1 John 4, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. In verse 11 of the same chapter, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Earlier I said that we are all here for a purpose. We may not know what it is. Your purpose may be that smile. The thing you're here to do may be to give money to a certain charity where that money can go to a person who needs it. I have seen how giving just a little bit of money can help someone who has nothing. I've had friends who have been helped with cancer without having to pay anything out of their pockets because of charities. Children who have been severely burned can get free treatment because of groups that raise money for that purpose. Just the other day in Canyon Lake, they had a backpack giveaway. Every backpack was full of school supplies. Where do those supplies come from? They came from somebody who was willing to give them. And that child will be able to go to school with school supplies and be able to learn. And I hear this all the time, but it's just having a son now is, makes this even more important to me. That child could be the next Mozart, could be the next Albert Einstein, could be the person who finds the cure for cancer, could be the next great minister that can bring people together all because someone donated some school supplies. Doesn't that make you feel tiny? By doing something so small, we could be fulfilling a purpose that God put us here for. Now I'm going to tell you flat out right now, that's not the only thing you need to do. We need to do other things. Yes, give the charity. Give of your time. Give of yourself. Love your neighbors. Show everyone that you are a Christian by example, not by word. What do I mean by that? When you are out, be a shining example of what a Christian should be. Now, next step is going to be really hard. When you're driving down the road in your car, try not to give in to road rage. I will tell you, I have problems with this all the time. If you drive 46 going between here and Bernie, you've got to learn to pray a lot. But it can be done. Our purpose could be sitting here today because somebody knows that you came to church. Why should I go to church? You don't go. Uh, yeah, I did. I was sitting in that pew listening to that guy just ramble on and on and on. Your purpose might be driving out of this parking lot today and seeing somebody on the side of the street that needed a little bit of cash. 
There was a time I didn't have a lot of money. Somebody gave me $20 for my birthday. That $20 could have done a lot. This is also several years ago, so $20 meant a lot to have it in my pocket. But a gentleman came up to me in a grocery store parking lot. He asked me, sir, can you spare anything? My alternator went out on my vehicle, and I've got to get it replaced because I'm trying to get home. Just something about the guy, just he screamed, giving, them, giving that $20. And I gave it to him. And there was this other gentleman walking. He said, why did you do that? He's probably just going to go use it for something else. And I literally watched him walk over to an auto zone. He went over there, and then when I came out of the store, I saw him working underneath the hood of his vehicle. Well, I'm also the son of a mechanic, so I had to go over there and see if I could help. And of course, the guy didn't have all the right tools, and I'm like, hey, guess what? I just so happen to have a toolbox. And so we sat there, and we put that alternator on his vehicle. And at the end, he turned to me and said, nobody else would help me. He said, thank you. And I looked at him, and I said, no, thank you. You just gave my whole day new meaning. Something so small is giving somebody a little bit of money was able to change that person's life. What happened after that point, I have no idea because I never saw the man again. But I hope that he remembered my generosity and that he went and did it to somebody else. Not because of any other reason than I was able to help him. We don't like the way our world is. But we can be the focus of change. We can go out and do good. And by our example, hopefully others will see it and want to do the same thing. Life is short. If we get so bogged down in hate, what's our life going to be? I could sit here and hate so many things. I could hate other countries for what they do to other countries. I could hate people that are different from me. I could hate my lot in life because my feet decided to break down. But where would that leave me? A person who did not know God because all I knew was hate. I don't want to be that person. I choose to love. I choose to forgive. There's going to be people in this world that will not ever agree on anything. And I'm still going to love them. The Olympic Games are going on right now. I got to see North and South Korean Olympians standing on the same podium taking a selfie together. You want to talk about two drastically different groups. I feel for the North Koreans because I, I hope that they're not going to be punished when they go home. But for one moment, North and South didn't matter. They were Olympians. I want that for America. For one moment, I don't want us to be Caucasian Americans, African Americans, Native Americans. We need to be Americans. And on top of that, I would love for every one of them to be Christians. We need to quit dividing ourselves and learn to love. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, you have made us in your image and we are perfectly made. However, we forget that so many times. We don't think about what we do to one another. And by doing that, we forget how much you love us. Always help us to remember that you are love and that to show you that we understand that we are to love our neighbors. Let us always strive to do good in this world and not evil. 
let us always remember that it's so easy to hate someone, but it's so easy to love them as well. Please protect us and guide us and be with us always. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.